This one here is the i5 M60. So this is the M Performance model and also with the M Sport Package Pro. That means the black frame around the double kidney. And also here the M logo. Lower part also when you have the normal M Sport Package looks sportier here. And mineral white is this exterior color. Here, when I give a little bit of shade to the front double kidney, you can get this optional, the iconic glow. Then the frame is also illuminated. Adaptive LED, main headlamp unit, then the daytime running light here, or when you hit the turning indicators or hazard lights, they replace it and have this pulsing effect. And turning indicators in the rear, very wide. Yeah, this is definitely visible. The length is now at 5 meters 6 or 199 inches. That's 10 centimeters or 4 inches longer than the predecessor. Wheels from 18 inch to maximum 21. These are the biggest 21 inch wheels in this M design. Really impressive indeed. And you can also get these black contrasts here, the side mirrors, also in the lower part. You can see it has a very high contrast, especially to the mineral white color. This one here more has this classic German angular styling. Very nice indentation here of the Five logo, by the way. Typical three box sedan styling, I like, and also the angular shapes, really widely drawn tail lamps. This is the BMW app, and here we can show you that remote parking is possible, tap and hold. So, for example, when it would be in a narrow parking lot or something, I can just control the car by my phone. So, no one is driving here, I'm not faking it. So, here I can press backward. Uh, there we go, there, yeah. and then I can ease the car out to open and close the vehicle. Use the smartphone app or you can also use the classic key fob. I'm glad it's still the choice. Flush door handles here, but they still give a haptic feedback when you open them like this. So at the moment the car is closed. There we go. That's open. You just need to hold a smartphone in your hand. It's also possible. Door closing sound. Yeah, I love that. Let's do it again. Mm, beautiful, very solid door closing sound. Inside of the doors, soft touch material, all structured, then it's even softer here a little bit for the elbows. And the window levers, they are mainly just black plastic, just have this, you know, this contrast on the top part. And the seating comfort is indeed superb. So one of the best at the moment in the sedan segment. As for headroom with 189 or 6 for 2 Still have headroom left here. This then the one with the glass roof and the, yeah, I have to push it forward actually because it rolls in in the front. So you have more headroom in the rear. So this one, you have fixed glass roof, but with the shade when it gets really hot, I think it's very important. Interior cockpit overview, you have this curved screen, but then 12.3 on the left, 14.9 inch on the right side. Steering wheel still with some physical buttons. It's a mix, so to speak. Right side here for the volume. BMW OS 8.5 here, different home screen as well. And then you also have this app view where you can access everything. Yeah, it's really a lot. You have a YouTube app now, you can watch Bundesliga and you also have the air console games for some gaming experiences, for example. Then the Apple CarPlay integration looks like this. Wireless, both also for Android Auto. Digital instruments, when I start up the vehicle, oh, you have the startup sound and then simple and clean, left side speed right side and the power or then here for the electric version you can see also the recharging and you can also get a proper head-up display. In the front you have inductive charging pad here also with some cooling holes then adaptive cup holders two USB-C chargers and we have still this control lever here there you can also control the infotainment system while driving and it also has a nice sound and still a normal volume jog right here I like that and you have this split opening I always like that for the storage right there and listen to that also with a nice closing sound. Rear seating area, it does fit for tall elves also in the rear, but it is a pain of this segment that also counts for the competitors that considering the exterior length, you don't have so much space for your legs in the rear. Hmm. Again, considering the package. However, it would fit even better when I put the front seat a little bit higher than the recess here at the back part of the seat would fit Fit better, <laughs> would, foot, would fit better for the knees and also for my feet underneath the seat. What I found quite cool is that here we just have a USB-C charger and an iPad holder. It's actually a very easy and simple solution. Here in the middle part, cup holders, they are adaptive. So I'm also happy here with the build quality and so on. 
can also fold down this ski hatch right here. And then in the lower part, we have a climate unit that is all digital and two more USB-C chargers. As for the trunk or the boot, <laughs> let's open it. We have 490 liters for the i5 or 520 liters for the combustion engine models. If you have a plug-in or i5, then you have some space underneath, but it's a little bit higher overall. And you can also fold the seats, unlock them right here and here, but then you either have to push it with the luggage, that's possible, or I have to go around, then you can also load through. Overall, the acceleration figure for the new 5 Series ranges from 7.5 seconds, slowest to 3.8 seconds. That is this one here, the i5 M60. Maybe later there will also be something else, like a true M version. We'll keep you updated with that. And there will also be a two-ring version if the sedan is not enough for you. Electric specific, you get a battery of 81 kilowatt hours net. As for recharging, less than 30 minutes from 10 to 80% state of charge. Let's go. Oh, that was more than 100 already. Whew. Wow, I mean, then for 10 seconds, I have this extra boost always available. Um, yeah, again, launch control only when stationary, boost and also while rolling already. And then we continue driving uphill here. Wow, that's really a lot of artificial sound. However, you can also turn that off. I can also show that to you very soon, no problem. Yeah, one more time uphill. It, it doesn't even feel like going uphill because you have so much power here. Wow, amazing. Then the steering feel, let's see, here in the sport mode. Reactions also from the low degree angle actually, and also how it gets to the outside. Here we have the adaptive M suspension. That means dampers are adaptive, and there's also the anti-tilt control in the rear. And since this is the i5, we also have the rear axle air suspension. So yeah, suspension-wise, it's not a very easy logic here. There are so many different choices. So that's why I also went in depth to explain all of that. And we also have the 21-inch wheels here mounted. So the biggest ones that are available. So far, the road is quite even and nice and so on. But let's also find out about the bumps and so on, if it gets really uncomfortable or something. But so far, he's actually quite nice. Noise insulation-wise, it's also super silent in here. You hardly hear anything from the outside environment. It really gives you a very, very calm feeling, together with the superb, superb comfort here of the Veganza seats. Great, now we've found a destroyed road that is about to be redone. Therefore, it's really bumpy and so on. But Remember, 21-inch wheels, and usually these large wheels mean no comfort at all, you know. So I always say, like, go for smaller wheels. But here, although it's a destroyed road, it feels like nothing. So I'm really impressed by the suspension. Noise insulation when being here on the motorway, around 120 kilometers an hour, so like 70 miles an hour. It's really good. Here, the tarmac is a little bit rougher. A little bit more tire noise. The one we were on before was a little bit less. Will change soon again. But the overall, you know, wind noise and so on is really low. Feels super comfortable. Now it's also possible to get an extra package for the plus package. And in front of us is also a vehicle. And first of all, I can take my hands off, and I can also look into the mirror. Look to the left to initiate a lane changing actually automatically. Let's see, let's try it again here. There we go, so I'm looking into the side mirror and the car is automatically changing the lane. I did not do anything with my hands, I just looked into the mirror. What is not possible is that I just look into the mirror right now and then the car is changing the lane. That, that doesn't work that way, so the car first has to give me the offer that you know, situation is ready to do that. So we ended up with about 19 kilowatt hours on 100 kilometers. That's 3.3 miles per kilowatt hour. So that would mean a real world concise range of 430 kilometers or 270 miles. So you might wonder why is this actually allowed and how do they keep track of the driver? Because, you know, I'm not supposed to take my smartphone and so on. 
um, I'm actually being tracked by the vehicle and this works by analyzing my head and my eyes you know and when the car for example detects that I'm really super distracted I mean we, we can try it out right maybe I do like I just pretend to you know use my smartphone no, there we go. driver distraction detected stay attentive so then there we go oh sorry sorry I'm still here <laughs> So you see, that works really, really quickly. And we can do another test, actually. So now I'm closing one of my eyes. I'm still looking. And there's this infrared sensor. And it even works with sunglasses, actually. I can also show that very soon. But first of all here, one eye closed is OK. But now I'm doing something that's not allowed. Um, I just do it for you. I trust the vehicle just with my eyes closed. Don't do this, don't try it at home. Just want to see, check that, there we go. So the car is saying like, you know, first warning. And if I would then continue that, then it would actually at some time abort and also hit the brake automatically and so on and so on. Very interesting now to compare, for example, the Mercedes E-Class or if you want to go EV with the EQE.